हेलो स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज डॉक्टर ए सैयद आई वेलकम यू ऑल फॉर द कोर्स ऑन फाइनेंट एलिमेंट मेथड इन सिविल इंजीनियरिंग आवर टुडेज टॉपिक इज हाउ टू डिराइव द शेप फंक्शंस फॉर द थ्री नोडेड सी एस टी एलिमेंट दैट इज कॉन्स्टेंट स्ट्रेन ट्रेंगुलर एलिमेंट सो फॉर शेप फंक्शंस इफ यू कंसिडर थ्री नोडेड सी एस टी एलिमेंट एशन इन फिगर In this figure, there are three nodes. Node number one, two, three. X one, Y one, X two, Y two, X three, Y three represent the Cartesian coordinates of these three nodes. Then, at each node of CST element, there are two degrees of freedom: horizontal displacement and vertical displacement. So, U one, V one, U two, V two are the displacements at node number one, two, and three respectively. Okay. Here U two V two and U three V three are the displacements of three nodes. Now, if you select any point P in this C S T element, any point P, x and y are the Cartesian coordinates of that any point P, and U V are the displacements of that any point P in x and y direction respectively. Okay, this is the C S T element under consideration. Now in this C S T element, there are total six degrees of freedom. U one, U two, U three. There are three degrees of freedom are in x direction, and three degrees of freedom that is V one, V two, V three are in y direction. So to write down the displacement function in x, we have to consider three degrees of freedom, and to write down the displacement function in y direction, we have to consider the three degrees of freedom. So when you write down the displacement function using Pascal triangle, we have to consider three elements from the Pascal triangle. So using this Pascal triangle, we can write down the displacement function in x direction u equal to alpha one plus alpha two x plus alpha three y, right? Now if you want to write down displacement function for y direction, that is v equal to, we know that this. Elements from the Pascal triangle remain same. Only generalized coordinates will be alpha four to alpha six. But in der derivation of shape function, number of shape functions for C S T element are three n one, n two, n three. So these three shape functions are used to represent the displacement in x as well as displacement in y direction. It means whatever shape functions are used to represent the displacement u. Same shape functions are used to represent the displacement v, and therefore no need to consider the displacement in y direction while deriving the shape functions. Only displacement in x direction is sufficient. So that's why u equal to alpha one plus alpha two x plus alpha three y. Okay. Now, if you write down the same displacement function in matrix form, u equal to The one x y are the elements from the Pascal triangle. Alpha one, alpha two, alpha three are the generalized coordinates. In more compact form, we can write down this u equal to p into alpha, where this row vector is called as p, and this generalized coordinate vector is called as alpha. Right? This is equation number one, where p is equal to parametric matrix. We know that. Now step number two is similar to bar derivation. Now we have to represent. The displacement function in terms of nodal displacement. So nodal displacements are three in x direction u1, u2, u3. So this u vector is replaced by this u vector is replaced by u1, u2, and u3, right? Then if you look at the This row vector, which represents the parametric matrix for three nodes, this x and y will be replaced by coordinates of that particular node. So, for node number one, x y will be replaced by x one y one. For node number two, x y will be replaced by x two y two, and for node number three, x y will be replaced by x three y three. Right, and that's why. This first row will be for row number one, one x one y one. For row number two, it is one x two y two, and for row number three, it is one x three y three. This alpha one, alpha two, alpha three are the generalized coordinates. And same if we write down in a more compact form, 
This left hand side vector represent the vector Xe that is nodal displacement. This 3 by 3 matrix represent the connectivity matrix that is A and this represent the vector of generalized coordinates. Similar to bar element, we can find out value of alpha from this equation number 2. It is alpha is equal to A inverse into Xc. Right? A inverse into Xc. If you take this A on left hand side, it will be inverse of that. So alpha is equal to A inverse into Xc. And if you substitute this alpha value, that is A inverse into Xc, in this equation here, in equation number 1, so it will be U equal to this matrix P and the value of alpha is equal to A inverse into Xc. Okay. Into Xc. So this will be u is equal to from equation number 1 right so same mathematics is used here right if you substitute this alpha from equation number 2 into equation number 1 you will get this u equal to p into a inverse into x right where p into a inverse is called a shape function which is represented by n right now we have to find out this shape function n is equal to so, P into A inverse. So, P is equal to 1xy, that parametric matrix which we have written in the very first step. And A inverse means inverse of this 3 by 3 matrix. Right? So, inverse of 3 by 3 matrix is also we can find out by using method of adjoint. 1 upon determinant into adjoint matrix. So, if you perform the inverse of this using method of adjoint. So, 1 upon determinant. Now, in the natural coordinate lecture, we had discussed that if you find out a determinant of 3 by 3 matrix where elements represent the coordinates of vertex of triangle, then the value of determinant is equal to 2 times area of that triangle. Right? This is one of the important property of triangular element. And that's why 1 upon determinant means 1 upon 2a we have written here in determinant or inverse of this matrix 1 upon determinant so determinant is equal to 2a this p matrix is repeated as it is now this matrix represent the adjoint matrix and adjoint matrix means transpose of cofactor so we have to find out cofactor of 1 x1 then y1 so it will be the first column cofactors of the second row element will be second column and cofactors of third row element will be third column so values of this a1 a2 a3 2 c1 c2 c3 that we have to find out right so now if you want to write down what are the values of shape functions okay so you have to multiply this row with the column one by one so one into a1 plus x into a2 plus y into a3 divided by this 2a is a value of n1 then if you multiply the same row with the second column it will be b1 plus b2x plus b3y upon 2a and similarly for third column you will get n3 okay of course a1 b1 c1 are the cofactors those also you can write down like this where a1 is equal to this b1 equal to this c1 equal to this similarly a2 b2 c2 and a3 b3 C3. These are the values of cofactors of that adjoint matrix. Okay. So these are the shape functions for three noded CST element. Okay. I hope all of you have understand the derivation of CST element, how to derive the shape functions for CST element. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.